Yes, welcome into Sports Bit. Betting Insight today, Thursday, September 1st. Paulie and Teddy, big game breakdown. We'll go rapid fire with a ton of NFL preseason games. Deep dive, college football, some win totals, Heisman odds, picks to win it. We'll get to all that and the play of the day. Bad beats, bad bets, bad for the books. How about bad for the books? The Rays, Red Sox, over, wind blowing out. Hanley with a grand slam, Teddy. Oh, yeah, 24 hits, five home runs. Yeah, the wind was blown out at Fenway last night. And, of course, not a good result for the house because there was a ton of over money. They were betting the over 9.5 up to 10, 10 minus 120, 10 minus 125. Didn't stop. And all that money turned into winning wagers with the slugfest in Boston. It didn't end there. One preseason game moved up because of weather, and the weather showed early. Redskins, Buccaneers, total bet down from 39 to 35 and a half, played in a monsoon. Yeah, it sure was. That was uh, one of those situations where all you had to do was look at the pre-game interviews. You're like, bam, they were jamming in bets on the under. Mac Brown. No, not the Mac Brown who coached Texas. Mac Brown, the running back for the Redskins. Mac Brown and Robert Kelly combined for 248 rushing yards on 35 carries. Not prepared to never hear from either one of them ever again. But they got it done for the Redskins and for the underbackers in week four of the preseason. Not a pretty game to watch. A moose in Colorado. Huge win for the Dodgers. They were down 8-2 to two in the 8th and 8-5 to five in the ninth. A runner on first with two outs. Base hit, base hit, walk, grand slam. Dodgers steal a game, Teddy. Andrew Tolls with a big hit. And I'll tell you what, this is the kind of rally that sparks a team in September and beyond. You know, this Dodgers team feels different from recent versions, and we all keep talking about what's going to happen when Kershaw comes back, what's going to happen when Kershaw comes back, what's going to happen when Kershaw comes back, is the Dodgers are going to give the Cubs a run for the NL title. Yes, that, that's a type of game that can really, you can get on a winning streak after that. I mean, to be down 8-2 to two in the 8th and win. Huge come from behind win for the Dodgers, who stay a game and a half up on the Giants in the West. And, and speaking of the Giants, bad bet the Diamondbacks a lot of sharps were going against Matt Moore, his first start off that 130 pitch near no hitter against the Dodgers. And Shelby Miller, he pitched well, two runs in six innings. He gets the loss. He's two and ten. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, they were betting Miller, uh, but I think a lot of it was betting against Moore. You talk about 130 plus pitches uh, in his last outing, the near no no against the Dodgers. It's almost an auto bet. Well, guess what? That auto bet lost. <laughs> he pitched well. Once again, in the D-backs, you know, uh, well, I'm very interested to see how hard they fight down the stretch. Uh, Arizona's a team that at times this year has, has shown signs of being mediocre, uh, but uh, I'm not convinced we're going to see their best baseball in September. Well, I, I agree with you there because they're going to clean house. I think LaRusa's out. I think Stewart's out. I think Hale's out. I think they're just going to get rid of everybody as that's been a horrible season for the D-backs. Hard to go against the Cubs at home. The Pirates were a bad bet. Cubs get out the broom. A 15-game lead in the division, their largest since the end of the 1907 season. Sure, we keep talking about the Cubs. We talk about how the books are getting pounded by Cubs betters every single night. Uh, I'll tell you what, there are bookmakers who cater to recreational players that have absolutely hated this baseball season for one reason and one reason only, the Chicago Cubs. They do it again That's in that sweep over the Pirates. We got a lot of games to get to up next. The final week of the preseason NFL will go rapid fire up next on Sportsbit. Betting Insight today on SBRPicks.com. Hey, welcome Sportsbit viewers. When you guys are all done at Teddy and Pauly's house, come on down here, all right? I just closed out August, over 44 units up in Major League Baseball and college football's around the corner. Double J sitting in today for Pistol Pete. And I've got 4 no. <laughs> I love it. Back on Sports Bit, time for Big Game Breakdown. Live odds, sportsbookreview.com. Week four of the preseason. Teddy, how many teams give a shit tonight? Uh, take the under. <laughs> uh, I'll put it that way. Uh, I mean, the rule of thumb for week four is any team that gives a shit in any way is a bet on squad. The markets know this, and we've seen any coach who even hints that he cares about winning, uh, their teams have gotten some betting attention. Uh, and that will continue between now and and kickoff tonight. Game one, Eagles, Jets, Eagles, three and a half, total of 38. Are we going to get a lot of, we're going to get a lot of McLeod, Bethel, Thompson? Could be four quarters of McLeod, oh, Bethel, Thompson, no. Ford, Philly. So 
You know, you're not going to see Sam Bradford. You're not going to see Chase Daniel. You know, this game's sitting with Philly laying three and a half. Uh, and the Eagles have no running backs either. You know, the, uh, uh, they don't want to play Ryan Matthews. They don't want to play Darren Sproles. They're not going to have Wendell Smallwood. You know, they were grabbing guys off the waiver wire to play running back in this ballgame. For the Jets, Bryce Petty and Christian Hackenberg. There was some talk we could see Geno Smith would have made the Jets an interesting option at plus three and a half. But uh, looks like Geno not going to suit up here. And, of course, Geno now trade bait as is Petty. Jets aren't going to carry four quarterbacks. So one of these guys is going to go. And there's a handful of teams around the NFL looking for a backup QB. It'd be interesting to see what happens here if the Jets showcase some of these guys or if they sit him on the bench for extended stretches. And it'll be all Hackenberg. Because Hackenberg, well, he did have one touchdown drive in his first outing last week. He also had one pick in his first preseason action. And I do not want three or four quarters of Christian Hackenberg if I'm betting on the Jets. Yeah, he finally got in the game. I don't know why anybody would want Geno Smith. Game number two, Saints, Ravens, Saints, five and a half, total of 40 and a half. The Saints' first string continues to struggle, Teddy. Yeah, uh, and you ask about teams that give a shit. In, in, in theory, the Saints give a, give a darn here. Uh, their first string was not pretty last week. Uh, Sean Payton now 0-7 straight up, 0-7 against the spread the last seven preseason games. And you see some of these quotes. Our plan in this game is to start the game playing our guys. Yeah, we're going to play a lot of our guys early on in this game, and I think it's important those guys get work at their positions. So our plan early in the first quarter is to play our starters and make a transition at some point. There'll be a handful of players who we continue to give more snaps to, blah, 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 blah. Uh, A lot of it will just be dependent on the kind of numbers where we're at at the start of the second quarter. All right, now, the Saints played their starters and in the first quarter of week four of the preseason last year, they led 10 nothing after one. The final score of that game was 38-10. to They did not score again. They gave up 30 and unanswered to Green Bay. Brett Hundley threw four touchdown passes, which is about as rare as you'll see in a preseason game as anything. So, before you run to the window betting the Saints, no, all the talk about Peyton and the starters, this is first quarter stuff, not fourth quarter stuff. To me, this price looks a little bit high. Game number three, live odds, sportsbookreview.com. Chargers against the 49ers. Chargers one and a half, 39 and a half from San Diego. Will Kaepernick be distracted or rattled? It's salute to the military night in San Diego. <laughs> Chip Kelly, Kaepernick's supposed to start. Chip Kelly said Kaepernick's one of the team's two best quarterbacks right now, and there's been no conversations about releasing him. I find that hard to believe. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. I'll take the over on the number of conversations San Fran has had about releasing Colin yes. Kaepernick. And talk about a buzzsaw. Look, I, I defend, even if I don't agree with his message, I defend Colin Kaepernick's uh, uh, right to protest in any way that he see fit. That's why we live in a free country. That being said, he's walking into salute to the military night yes. in San Diego. Oh, oh, man, that's a buzzsaw. Oh. Uh, you know, Blaine Cabard still the favorite to win the job. Uh, and for San Fran, there's likely to be some Jeff Driscoll behind center in, in this one as well uh, as Kaepernick. But, you know, Kaepernick saw a little bit of action last week against uh, Denver. was not pretty for him behind center. And certainly the markets aren't expecting it to be pretty for him in this one either. But for San Diego, uh, you know, let's put it this way. Kellen Clemens, we love the veteran QBs. San Diego started Clemens, played the first half last year, week four. The Chargers were kept off the scoreboard. Live odds, sportsbookreview.com. How about the Panthers and the Steelers? Panthers 4, 37 and a half. Backup Derek Anderson for the Panthers has missed uh, three straight practices. Could we see Joe Webb the whole way? Yeah, it looks like it's going to be Joe Webb for four full quarters against Pittsburgh, who finally won a game last week. But again, Tomlin, when they won the game, that improved them to now 3-13 and 13 in their last 16 in the preseason. And Tomlin doesn't look like he's going to play anyone for the Steelers. Dolphins and the Titans. Dolphins two and a half, total of 38. Adam Gase said, uh, we're not going to put Tannehill out there. Yeah, uh, and of course, Moore's already out. So that means it's Zach Dysert and Brandon Doty as uh, Miami's QB rotation with a total of 38. But for Tennessee, man, you talk about a bad spot. They are in, uh, out in Oakland. They get the win. They fly all the way back east. Short week. Now they got to go down to the heat and humidity of Miami. 
it's not really a spot that you love uh, the Titans, but for, as far as for the Dolphins, that's a QB rotation I would not be particularly excited about laying points with. The, the Rams are in Minnesota to take on the Vikings. Vikings 1.5, 35 the total. I would expect Goff to get the start for the Rams. What, what's Fisher up to? Oh, this is why we love Jeff Fisher so much. Okay, so he's at the news conference, and the reporter goes, is, is Jared Goff going to get the start on Thursday at Minnesota? And Fisher's reply, I haven't decided yet. That's a good question. Do you think he should? Send the reporter, uh, is, is Case Keenum going to play in the final preseason game? Well, and Fisher responds, we're in the discussion stages right now. Great questions. We don't have answers for you. In other words, I ain't telling you guys squat. But this much I know. All right, Minnesota, who just cut Brad Sorensen, just re-signed Brad Sorensen. He could go for an extended stretch. They're not obviously not going to have Teddy Bridgewater this year. They're not going to play Sean Hill at all. Joel Stave and Brad Sorensen and Minnesota's laying points. I don't know. You know, <laughs> we'll get back to this game when it comes to play of the day. Yeah. yeah. Well, one more thing too. I thought the I thought this year's hard knocks has been horrible. There is no juice and no storylines. Nothing going on with the Los Angeles Rams. I find hard knocks boring this year, which is uh, you know a first for me. They usually do a great job on HBO with that. Up next, college football. We preview the season, Heisman odds, win totals we like, and the play of the day on Sportsbit. Betting Insight today on SBRPicks.com. Hey guys, it's that time of year again. Football season. And with that, here's a message from everyone's favorite prick. Listen up, fags. This deal starts in one week. If you think you can handicap football and beat my ass, come and play for a chance to win 50,000 big ones. Visit BeatThePrick.com and get ready to get steamrolled. Back on Sports Bit, deep dive. College football's here. Run down some win totals and some things we like here in a second. Uh, let's start with the Heisman odds, Teddy. You have uh, Deshaun Watson, the favorite, at plus 350. Christian McCaffrey, 5 to 1. Fournette, 7 to 1. JT Barrett, 12 to 1. Uh, maybe, su- are you surprised Watson's the favorite there? No, of course not. Because. Watson's going to be on TV during prime time on the East Coast more than McCaffrey will. End of story. Look, uh, <laughs> of all the things that I wouldn't bet on, the Heisman Trophy's got to be at the top of the list. Most of the Heisman voters don't watch college football. Most of them are on the wrong side of 90. The press kits <laughs> that they are, I'm telling you, they're ancient. I know you're right, I know. I mean, the, the, the press kits that the schools send out have as much to do with who gets voted on as anybody else. Nothing matters until November, and whoever's team wins a big game in November and they get 100 yards, then they win the Heisman. Uh, I mean, it's the dumbest award in all of sports. And, oh, by the way, let's list 500 candidates and take a cut out of each one. I mean, the house take on these wagers is insane. Please, you want to bet Watson, bet Watson. You want to bet McCaffrey, bet McCaffrey. But don't bet big money on this stuff. This is pizza money type of bets. This is brag to your friends kind of bets. This isn't risk any substantial portion of my bankroll. That being said, who do you like, Polly? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, McCaff- I said it yesterday. McCaffrey should have won last year, and he should win this season. But Watson, one of the best players in college football. How about how about Clemson uh, plus five fifty to win it all? To me, their season comes down to that trip to Florida State on the road where now they're going against what should be a redshirt freshman at quarterback. If Clemson can win that game, I like their chances to make the playoff. And then you saw what they did against Alabama. That's why Watson's so good. They went up and down the field. He's throwing the walk-on wide receivers lighting up Alabama. Yeah, and the beautiful thing about the beautiful thing about Clemson <laughs> is that they return every yard from last year, every point from last year. On the offensive side of the football, that team is loaded. That being said, you got to play defense to win a title. There's always roadblocks. There's always someone that comes out of nowhere. There's always that one game where you're in the rain somewhere and you better make that field goal at the end because if not, your title dreams are over. And at the price, again, it all comes down to the price. Clemson is chalk. Everyone's expecting exactly what you saw last year. Every preseason prognosticator, it's so freaking boring. They're like, oh, it's going to be Oklahoma and Clemson and uh, Ohio State. You know, it changes year to year. 
surprise teams come around. And yeah, uh, Clemson deserves to be one of the favorites to win the national title. That being said, at the price being offered, I wouldn't even consider a wager on Clemson. Not even maybe. Yep. All right. A couple a couple bets that I like. We already gave out Tennessee under ten here on Sportsbet a, a few months ago. I, I don't trust yeah, Butch and, Jones and did at all. Did you see how the juice has moved? Paul, I don't mean to cut you off, but you see how yeah. the juice has moved on that Tennessee under ten? How big? How much is it now? Yeah. Uh, let's put it this way: <laughs> we gave out a good bet. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Under ten, we gave that up. Uh, I like Iowa over eight and a half, minus one sixty. Pretty good team. I'd say they're between 20 and 25 in the country, just like last year. But again, the schedule is a joke. Iowa will find a way to win at least nine games. Here in Las Vegas, UNLV with Tony Sanchez. His second year as head coach, over five, minus $1.45. Winnable games for UNLV. Jackson State, Central Michigan, Idaho, Fresno, Hawaii, Wyoming, Nevada, Reno. I think Sanchez can find a way to get to six. San Diego State, over nine and a half, minus $1.50. Phil Steele said they could be favored in every single game this year. They play nobody. San Diego State over the win total. They should at least win 10 games. And I, I, I couldn't believe this. Trubisky, Fedora, pretty good head coach. Good season last year. North Carolina plus $3 to win the Coastal Division. Odds makers have Miami as the favorite. Rick just got there. Calm down. Yeah, exactly. Georgia fans will tell betters that they might not be want to be quite so fast and putting their money on Mark Rick to actually win something. Uh, and that's a bet that makes a little bit of sense to me. North Carolina plus 300 win the coast, although I got questions about their defense. I got question marks about Trubisky. Uh, they're not it, – it, they deserve to be underdogs. At plus 300, there's modest, modest amount of value on North Carolina. You know, but with your win totals, what are you laying 160 with Iowa? You're laying 145 with the Rebels. You're laying 150 with San Diego State. So you go two and one, and you only make half a unit of profit. And you lock in all of that money all year long, and you can't use it for anything else. Be careful laying the big juice the last two days before kickoff. Iowa might have been a great bet at 8.5, minus 110 two months ago. At minus 160, I don't like it. San Diego State. Might have been a great bet over 9.5, minus 110 two months ago, or a month ago, at minus 150. It's not nearly as good of a bet. That being said, I mean, there's not a one of them that are going to disagree with you. Well, I probably will disagree with you. But I think the Mountain West is going to be better than they were last year. And to ask the Rebels to go 6-6, six and six, I mean, this isn't a program with a lot of history of winning. This is a program with no depth. I know you listed all those winnable games, but guess what? All of those teams looking at UNLV and going, that's our winnable game. So, in particular, that's the one I would probably disagree with out of the uh, four that you listed, Paul. But uh, the bottom line with all of these bets right now, you're, it's, it's hard to bet against some of these moves because they make sense. But at this stage of the game, at this stage of the betting market, you can't be coming on and be the last guy to the party betting some of these teams over or under. Surprises and disappointments. I'll start with a surprise. Everyone talking about Stanford, UCLA, and USC, and Washington, too. How about the Pirate? I like Mike Leach. Did a great job last year with Washington State. Falk's a terrific quarterback. They could have won 10 games last year. They had Stanford beat at home, but they had some kicking issues and missed some chippy field goals. They should have won that game. I think Washington State's going to be a surprise. And who knows? Maybe they shock the world and make the Pac-12 title game. <laughs> that would shock the world, considering the state of that program just a few years ago. I'm going to call my surprise team. I'm going to go with the Minnesota Golden Gophers. This has nothing to do with how good Minnesota is. We talked a minute ago about how Iowa's schedule is really weak. Look at Minnesota's schedule. The Big Ten West is brutally bad. And any team that's halfway decent in that division is going to have success. Nebraska faces a tougher slate. Minnesota does not. Oh, and by the way... They avoid Ohio State, Michigan, and Michigan State out of the East. So uh, I think the Gophers are going to have a pretty good season. And, yeah, if they're 7-1, 8-0 going into November, guess what? They'll attract some national attention. Minnesota is my surprise team. And for the fourth year in a row, disappointment, USC. <laughs> dumpster fire. Pat Hayden did a lot of damage to that program. Let's see, Teddy. Ah, we interviewed Chris Peterson. No, no thanks. Let's hire Sark, the alcoholic. We can go out and get anybody we want. We're USC. 
Eh, let's promote Clay Helton because the kids like him. Horrible hire. USC will fail to live up to expectations again. Fade USC. Sad state of affairs with the Trojans. Yeah, and the Trojans doing a lot of rebuilding on the defense side of the football this season. Not reloading. That program was reloading when Pete Carroll was in charge. Now, when everyone on defense graduates, they have to rebuild. Uh, my team, I got to pick the Sooners. You know, my disappointment, you have to pick Oklahoma. You got to. There's so much love for Oklahoma. Look, the Pac-12, the Big 12 is no joke. All right, there's plenty of tough competition. You look at Oklahoma's schedule, in four of their first six games, they're going to be challenged. All right, they lose once, it's a problem. They lose twice, now their season's ruined. Stoops with expectations. Enough said. And to me, that's a bet against situation and has been. They might win some games. I don't think they're going to cover a whole lot of point spreads, and that's what I'm interested in. So, Oklahoma, I'll pick them as my disappointment for the 2016 college football season. Yes, yes. Excellent. How about the weekend preview show tomorrow? UCLA, A&M, Clemson, Auburn, LSU, Wisconsin, USC, Alabama, Notre Dame, Texas. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. I think we're going to get we'll throw in Old Miss and Florida State as well. Can't wait for that. What a, what a weekend. That's going to be a lot of fun. And, of course, if you're interested in more future book odds, check out the link uh, right here on the blur below at sportsbookreview.com slash college football future bets. You can get an idea uh, of what's out there for national championship and divisional odds. Good link below. Yes, money time. Play of the day. Back to the preseason NFL. Betting number 125, the Rams, plus one and a half against the Vikings. The horrific Bridgewater injury. Players were vomiting on the field. They, you, they canceled practice. Now they're looking at Stave playing. Sorensen, as you mentioned, this is the ultimate. We don't give a shit game, Teddy. Yeah, and, and of course, for L.A., even though Fisher didn't give us anything, this is what we have. We have Sean Mannion. If Goff doesn't play, if Keenan doesn't play, we've got Sean Mannion. Sean Mannion is a bet on quarterback in this situation. And I'm telling you, if there's ever a spot to Minnesota, I know Zimmer's all that. But if ever there's a – if it's in the preseason, if there's ever a spot that a team is not likely to bring their A game for a week four preseason contest, it's tonight for the Vikings. Give me the Rams, game number 125 plus – one and a half, and there's an urgency here. I do not expect this line to be available by kickoff. Yes, all right. Can't wait tomorrow. We'll run down all those big college games and recap what happens Thursday night in the preseason and college on Sports Betting Insight today on SBRPicks.com.